So welcome everyone. This is uh, Search Party's playback series. Um, yours are very welcome to episode number and not even <laughs> sure anymore. <laughs> Five, six, maybe six. I think it's six. And we have Michael here. Um, who wears a lot of hats, um, but primarily, um, as for the purpose of this video, um, a member <laughs> of Paper Tigers and Virgins. Yeah. So, uh, Michael, you're very welcome onto the show. Thanks. Um, and so, uh, are you looking forward to the interview, first yeah. and foremost? Yeah, it's better than working on a Tuesday. <laughs> That's it. Better put on a fancy shirt. And... Uh, I think what was great about like you know getting you on here like and even before like we've started here like you have such a lot of experience in the scene and you're like an avid like sort of fan of the local scene too yeah so it, it's I think we're gonna have a good wee discussion here. that's a nice What's way of calling on? me old appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> no I do I love like I love local music and, like, I've been playing shows since I was, like, 14. My mum and dad booked my first show, which was, like, super cool. <laughs> in this place called Jarrow's it used to be Warzone Centre. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was amazing, like, this punk collective thing. And, like, we played our first show and, like, we got paid £40. And I was like, I've made it. Like, <laughs> there's a rules outside. And, like, but see, from then, like, hooked. Just yeah. hooked. And, uh, like, I do the old Crows thing. And that's solely based around promoting local music and talent not just solely based on the music but like photographers videographers like working with different press people and all because i feel there's just so like a wealth of talent in the northern ireland ireland as well but northern ireland and it's just untapped and people need to know about it and need to get it out there and like stuff like this like i mean it's amazing you know because mm -hmm. it just puts like the word out there about like all this great music that's coming out of yeah. here, and we'll not say like we're not the only people doing this. Like you know, it it it's not a new idea. There's other yeah. guys oh, yeah. out there, and like, but the sort of way we were taking it is like the more the merrier. You know what I mean? Sure, like exactly. We love like a load of the artists that we interact with here. So it's just like it's another way just to be like here, the people who follow us. Here's some yeah. stuff that we like. Um, and getting to know these people too, because there's like some class characters in the scene. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that first gig and uh what what was the name of the first band? So <clears throat> um we were called Fluid. Fluid. And I um got you know whenever you're in school and you do art you get those big Ryler whatever pads. Drew the logo in my art book, coloured it in, cut it out. It was like the spiky. It wasn't like death metal, the load of twigs and trees, but like stuck it on the kick drum. And we played with this band. There are two bands, um, the Cabin Boy, and they were from here. And they were like a Caius kind of stonery oh, rhythmic. Okay. Like they were a three piece, no vocals. Um, Anna played bass and that. She went on to play bass in the Faro oh, for a little while. Cool. And then, so they were like amazing. And then the, this band called the Redneck Manifesto, they're from Dublin. Yeah. So they're like, they're virtuosos. And here we come with our cover of Roots by Sepultura and we can't play the solo. You know, it was like, but I mean, it was just that experience of getting out there and getting to, to do it, you know, and like that, I'm still here doing it. Like what, 23 years later or whatever, you know. That's crazy. Love it. Um, yeah, it's amazing. And why, why do you think there's like, I don't know what way to put this, but there's something about that, that hooks you in to just being really in the like, local music. And when you, when you get a part of this scene, you don't just like get involved with putting your own music out there, but you're like invested in what everybody else is doing. And, like, and that push towards making collectives and... Yeah. and communities and stuff what is it about here that drives you to do that I think like what we were kind of talking about before like whenever I started doing this it was from a very like kind of punk DIY thing and that was just kind of like instilled in me you know and that's from listening to bands like Fugazi and Black Flag and you know all that kind of stuff and so I was like that's what you do you know yeah. you like you don't you know there's not some guy like pulling up in a limousine with a cigar being like you stick with me kid you'll go far you know like if you want to do something like you go and you speak to someone and you meet people and then you figure out how to do it yourself you know because that was just what i was reading about and that that's what all these bands done so then i've always kind of strived to, to do that and then looking around 
like you see and so i watch you like they done like that a little solidarity thing and you know you see like people like building their own scenes within the scene and like yeah. kind of cloistering around people and bringing stuff in and like i think if you're in it for the right reasons that naturally happens because like like i don't know you guys but like i like i get to meet you and then we get to work together and then we get to go to shows and then you know that builds and builds and then you never know where stuff like that leads to you know it's like even yeah. whenever we go we're gonna go tour and then so I've kind of been speaking to different bands and different people and like you get to know them and then next thing is like there's a band from Scotland they want us to come over and do a show over there again and then we're going to bring them over here and like that gig swap thing as well is something that used to happen like a lot between bands in Dublin and Belfast yeah. and you don't really see it so much but I always thought it was a really good idea you know like we'll put you on down here and you know and then it just spreads you know yeah. and there's something about here like that punk connection to like you know that 70s and yeah 80s scene of the whole good vibrations crack and i think like that's what sort of hearing those stories for me mm-hmm. at least that my introduction to the scene was like seeing all that and seeing all those like bands still like yeah working away i'm playing like the likes of the outcast and like and the defects and stuff all still down in the warfare yeah. center and like and us like coming on as like teenagers like supporting them and yeah. that was like I was crazy and seeing that that was the way they done it it was like we're going to do it this way yeah. and so there's always been that similar sort of community feeling yeah I think like especially now like you're starting to see people just going out and putting on their own shows and like for ages people didn't do that mm-hmm. you know and that's why I kind of started doing it as well because I was just like well there's like a few people doing it but if I want my band to play, I'm not going to wait around. Like, it, yeah. it's just that kind of drive to go out and get it. And, like, if something isn't happening, then you can go and make that happen. Like, you don't need to wait for anybody else to give you the thumbs up or tell you that it's okay. Like, just be pig-headed about it and go do it, you know? Yeah. Um, I feel like, yeah, we, we realised that pretty early on as well. You know, when we were about um, 16, 17, we started that, bla- that Blackstaff music yeah, yeah. thing. And... And we started putting on our own shows for our bands, but for other bands mm-hmm. that like we knew that rehearsed in the same places as us and played similar shows. And um, and because nobody was just handing anything to us, it was just yeah. like, okay, well, we'll pull together and we'll all just do it ourselves. And um, what we're talking before was roll the cameras there. And, you know, what we're talking about that feeling in other regions that it's mm-hmm. like, Bands sort of are waiting for like that yeah. to be given to them. Um, I think that sort of comes from like the advice that bands get. You know, mm. like if you look up how to get gigs or something on YouTube, it's like you know, <laughs> like it's it's like all these people who have like made it. You yeah. know, the traditional way of like they got spotted. The like uh, they made a viral video. Yeah. Like they they done this or that, and they were given the thing. So like they're giving out this advice to like you know, the teenagers who are only starting a band and they're saying to them, oh, yeah, you just have to get an agent and you have to get a, uh, get on board with a promoter and uh, and then your manager sorts <clears throat> all this out. And, but in the real world, for, like, 99% of bands, none of that is the case, you know. It's, no. It's, if like, you want anything to happen, then you have to do it yourself. You become the booking agent, the promoter, the manager, you know, yeah. all that stuff yourself. Like you say, you, like... It's a good thing I look good in hats because I do wear a lot of them. But, like, you know, you you have to go and... It's just that drive to go do it. And, like like you say, it's probably just what's out there now and people just being, like, you know, someone's going to come along and just hand you this. And, like, it just... I mean, for 99% of the bands, like, that's not that's not ever going to happen. You know, like, you hear, like, um, churches kind of blew up because they were putting, like, songs on soundcloud or like myspace or whatever and like i mean obviously they're still they were still working towards it but like overnight they kind of shot the popularity and like this other band sleigh bells was pretty much the same like lily allen back in the myspace days i don't know if you remember myspace maybe bebo but uh so like she just put stuff out and then just like shot to fame and that was like that's in the infancy of the internet as well but now like things are just flooded there's so much out there like i mean you know yourself you upload a song 
and like it could just do nothing like if you don't have the right people and like go on and tell people about it like you need to shout about it you know whereas yeah. then before there just wasn't that kind of saturation so it was maybe uh, more probable but now like you gotta like you know yeah and that, that brings in its own problems as well i think because um if you don't shout enough about it nobody's gonna pay any attention to it but i think there's like a balance there oh yeah where of course. like i feel like a lot of um independent artists shall i say like well like maybe you know twist what's actually happening just to like sort of give themselves a bit more clout if yeah. you know what i mean it's like um <laughs> it's like they the play like a slot at like a, a community like uh, family fun day or something yeah. and, and then they're like first festival appearance yeah. bro <laughs> yeah, or like or it's it's like um uh, you know the, the <laughs> their song reaches somewhere in like South America and it's yeah. like shout out to all the Argentinian fans yeah. out there you know yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of thing so I know what you mean. there's a like, there, there's a lot of people that make a meal out of that sort of stuff and it's going but it works it, yeah. it 100% works for them it's that whole fake it till you make it thing yeah. and um, the bands that I bands and artists, you know, that I see doing that, often, you know, like people go, "Wow, that's amazing!" It's you know, people people are just like they're unaware of like what that achievement actually looks like. Yeah. So they're just like, "Yeah, cool." You have people listening to you in Argentina, and you're playing festivals. You must be a rock star. Yeah, you're gonna go play rock and Rio next week. But not for to some granny eating a fifteen and drinking a cup of tea. Like. Yeah. Um. Or like I sold out this show. Yeah. You know, and it's like, um, uh, it's like overwhelmed to, to sell out the show, and it's like, it it's like thirty cab. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, so there's that balance, obviously. Then is what I'm trying to say of like, you know, do you do you say look at what you're doing? Yeah. Or do you have to be a bit natural and like real about it? Like there probably is a there is a balance, and like sometimes you do have to milk that community festival experience for all it's worth you know but um certain the thing that i find just from like i mean i've been in like tons of bands like over the years and like we recorded songs and put them out and just kind of thought like in before i learned about all this stuff like someone is just going to hear that and that'll be it and that just doesn't happen like you need to go out and like tell people about it and like contact press and do all this kind of stuff and but I mean, like, if you believe in what you're doing and what you're doing is good, then like it'll it'll pay off some way down the line. I don't mean like a Mercedes or whatever, but like to me, it's a success if I put something out like the Virgins thing. I thought I was going to put it out and like six people were going to listen to it. And that was because I was going to make them listen to it, you know, and like yeah. we put it out and then it just kind of just kind of took off, you know. Yeah. But I mean, like that was from like pushing it as well and like different like groups and like press and all that kind of thing and we got some PR in as well and then because I've been doing that for a while I can kind of do that myself but like you need to go yell about it you know yeah and I want to touch on like the the releases with yeah yeah sure and paper tigers too but um before we do that we'll go to our first track of the week and I think it's going to be our pick and uh it came out today um and the same day we're filming this on the 15th, I think, of October, 16th, <laughs> one of those days. And it's the day we're putting out the Echo Park music video, but also uh, Reese Ajaro put out Space and Time, uh, their uh, new track, and I think they're playing in the Students' Union tonight. Yeah. So uh, a lot of parallels there between the two, uh, between our two bands, but that new track, oh my God, it's unbelievable. Um, really good. It's the best thing I've heard them put out yet. So, we'll listen to that. Uh, Reese Ajaro, Space and Time.
So tell us a bit, uh, you know, about what's going on now um, for Paper Tigers and for Virgins. What, what's, uh, I suppose Virgins is a more recent thing, and what sparked that like project to come about? So, like, probably like a lot of people, and from watching the other interviews, I, I hear a lot of people saying that, like, they started to get into production and recording because, like, you're at home, yeah. you know? And uh, we got some Arts Council funding, so I was able to go buy mics and all that kind of stuff, which was amazing. And then, like, I play... Like, I started out, I was on drums, and then I kind of taught myself guitar and then bass and stuff. So, yeah. um, And then I just, like, happened across this band called Slow Crush. They're, like... It's just shoegaze. It's just, like, this heavy, floaty, like... See it in colours. It's, like, pink and purple all the time. And I just got really into them. And then I was, like, wonder what else there is. And then I started listening to all these other bands like Were and like Nothing, Gleamer, Blushing. Like obviously like My Bloody Valentine is like a mm-hmm. touch point for every shoegaze mm-hmm. band. I just started listening to all this stuff, man. And then like picked up a guitar. I actually picked up the bass and then wrote this song. It's called Transmit a Little Heaven. It's not out. But um, wrote the bass to that. And then I was like, oh, well, I'll write guitar. And then wrote that. And then I was like, well, I'll go record. Because it was COVID, I could just go up to the practice room on my own and just record drums. And then... I'd like six songs and was just like, well, I suppose like, and then because I was doing it myself, like it was all me. And then like, cause I was teaching myself production recording as I went along. I was like, these mm-hmm. sound pretty good. And uh, I was just like, maybe I could put these out, you know, just put it out and like, who cares? And then uh, there's all the shoegaze stuff. I always find there's like a really kind of like feminine element to it, which I think it, it, I'm really just drawn to. Like I yeah. like the kind of, that kind of thing so I wanted to get and I cannot sing like I sound like a pterodactyl dying whenever I sing it's awful like I used to play in this band Thieves and it was just a screamy thing so it was fine but if I tried to hit a note like it awful so I got in touch with someone they kind of didn't really work out I got this other girl in Brooke and then she came to the house and we recorded some demos and I was like well this sounds really good now well in my estimation and then I was like well should probably go to it properly and then we went and recorded with Johnny Woods so I did Winona Bleach yeah. and then so he ended up playing bass in that song and then I was just like well I may as well put this out and then I was like I'm going to put it out then I may as well do a show I can't help myself like every two weeks I seem to start another band and I'm like I'm planning like I write all this stuff and like we were saying before you know I've, I play in Paper Tigers playing Virgins I play drums in this heavy band that isn't out yet but then I have like all these hardcore songs as well that are just sitting there. I'm just like, I should just record those and just put it out. But so then I ended up like got this live band together. Dave, who used to play in Thieves and Tusks with me, and he plays bass in the heavy band. And then um, these guys, Connell and Mark from Fagash McCann, yeah. who are like a stunning band. They're just amazing. So then Mark plays bass in that, but he plays guitar in Virgins and Connell on drums. And then just kind of sent them the demos and I was like if you are cool to learn this there's all the parts and they just kind of learned it and I think we had like we had two full band practices and then played a show like I had kind of practices with like two or three people but with two full band practices and that was like four run throughs of the set and then played the American for the asphyxia people who are yeah. also a great bunch of people um, there's another week community yeah that's what I mean and like um, from playing with them then um, like Sienna came down and took photos of the last show and you know like I met a bunch of those guys and they play in bands I'm like well we should do shows together that's what I mean it just yeah. spirals I um, just have to be careful not to join any more bands but <laughs> yeah but that's kind of like how it all came about it's just it was really selfish because I just wanted to do this kind of music you know and like I don't there's not a whole bunch of that going on up here even down south there's maybe like Just Mustard or kind of shoegazy mm-hmm. and but there's not a whole bunch of like that. Like you hear influence coming through in different bands up here, but like, and some bands don't want to be classed as that. But I was like, we're a shoegaze band. That's what we're doing. Like hit all the reverb all at once, turn on the fuzz, let's go. That's the thing you, you said, but like he's just done two rehearsals and then went out. Like with the shoegaze sort of lends itself to being like a bit more jammy and like, yeah. you know, just more like improvised and stuff too. So yeah. you can just like, Go well, nuts of it too. It was we were lucky in that. I think because Mark and Connell play together and me and Dave play together. Yeah. Like we were we could look at each other for cues and all and but yeah. I mean it just it went it was so good and like the reaction we had was just great and I was kinda ready for it just to fall on its ass, you know, and then because we hadn't played 
I haven't played a show in like 18 months. And then I was like, because all the other stuff I do is so high energy and like yeah. you wing yourself about and like fall over and everything. It's like, what am I going to do whenever like it's kind of a bit slower and like laid back. But then the live stuff kind of has a diff, it takes on a different kind of form and there's a wee bit more kind of energy to it. And it's not just like standing there looking at your shoes or yeah. whatever, you know. But um, yeah, it's, it's great. I love it. Love it. Brilliant. Um, I suppose we'll take a time now for you to pick your track of the week. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go the Tigers one because it'll it's the it, the single will be out by the time this comes out, so it's Blue Light Trails and it's the um not the crap on virgins or anything, but so it's off our new EP that's coming out next year. It's called Graceless and uh, the song's kind of like about like people. Everybody goes out at the weekend and they're like running from the monotony of this like awful week that they've had, and people go out and drink, and then you're in like a stranger's bedroom or like living room dancing at like 3 a.m. and like the sun's coming through the curtains but like in the back of your head you know like come Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon you're going to wake up and you're going to be like I don't want to do that again and like I hate this feeling and you know it's just kind of about looking for happiness in the wrong places but you're not you're reaching for something more but you never quite get there Despite how dark that sounds, it's quite an upbeat song, which is strange. Like the Beach Boys, you, you took know. Took me somewhere there. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, but that's kind of what it. That's kind of what it's about. But um, yeah, there it kind of bounces along. But I like that juxtaposition, you know. And like Haley, me and Haley uh, share the kind of lyrics and melody ideas and stuff. But this is all her. I could never write a song as like mine tend to be, but more obtuse and wrapped in metaphor and stuff. Whereas she's yeah. just very, very direct with it. So it, it's nice to have both those kinds of voices in the band, you know? Yeah. Great. I want to talk to you about that too. Sure. <laughs> but we'll take the break. <laughs> um, and we'll, we'll get a listen to it.
so what was said there um something that you said really resonated with me was that whole like having like that writing style of, of being like real like um vague or mm-hmm. like a fake's not a great word for it but like you know like metaphors mm-hmm. and, and like very indirect versus the like I love you, baby. Yeah. Like you know, <laughs> I want to like, hold your hand. Um, like yeah, Beatles yeah. versus like Nirvana. Nirvana, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's basically the the two ends of the spectrum, and that's something I've um had like a good wee, like working sort of relationship with um in like the other band um I'm in because like well I feel like the stuff we do with Search Party mm-hmm. um would like to like really get into like the detail mm-hmm. of like. That's make us weird and like that's make it like var like all these ul- ulterior sort of like narratives going through this Layers. song. Yeah. And um whereas like uh Matt Donner right the stuff with and I, it's like it's very like that real hooky, mm-hmm. like it's like, you know, just hook after hook. Yeah. And real like to the point direct lyrics um and i've just written with him in the last like year and a half has been like strange as yeah. well because that, that dynamic of mm-hmm. like um of trying to the fate of both like yeah. sides of like i want to make this like not easy to understand but then also i want it to be like really catchy yeah so. it's hard do you write lyrics yeah yeah like that it's interesting like we kind of both said Nirvana there because that would be from growing up listening to Mm -hmm. Nirvana and like the way he approached lyrics and everything like I think that's amazing and it's something that just kind of stuck with me and I never like if we're gonna if I sit down to watch a film I don't want to be spoon fed you know it's like it's like Blade Runner that narrative at the end Blade Runner that they took out I don't want that like I want to think about it and figure it out myself and Mm -hmm. like I want to like go through the layers and like find the different narratives and what does this mean and like it's like looking at album covers and like picking out what does this mean and like all those kind yeah. of I love it's, that it's like that sort of thing of like when you were in English in like fifth year yeah. you hate it but like I and it's that, that artsy then. fartsy stuff but see when you're making your own stuff yeah you it just feels like you know it gives it a whole lot more like dimensions and like people might discard this band for like for their songwriting qualities, but Alex Turner and Arctic Monkeys, I mm-hmm. think, is that type of songwriter too. Yeah. Where like it's a load of random words for mm-hmm. India verse, but like you can pick it apart. Yeah. You know, it's not just like a load of like crap. Yeah. There there's like something there. But um, he they achieve that balance as well of like because you look good on the dance floor, you know, and yeah. it's like that what you said, there's all this weird stuff and then like there's going to be stuff in there that is more than what it seems, but then you get to the chorus and it's like, you look good on the dance floor and there's your hook. And it's like, it's yeah. direct as being punched in the face, you know, and you, there's no running from that song. Like they're not a band I'd be super into, but it's like, they write great songs, you yeah. know? Um, and it's, I think whenever I write stuff, like I just don't, I can't be that direct with things, you know, like there, there's a song Maloko, I don't know, I should, probably shouldn't be talking about it, it's fine. And uh, on the EP, and I wrote the verses and then she wrote the chorus. So even within that one song, there are two different perspectives. Uh-huh. But, like, one, they, com- they all complement each other. But it's interesting, like, just how kind of, like, flowery. And I love English and loved English lit. And, like, what does this mean in all language and stuff? So, like, there's a lot of that in the verse. Then you get to the chorus and it's just, like there's your hook and like I struggle and wrestle with that as well because I want to do the weird metaphorical deep stuff you know and you can peel it all back and ideally like you want someone gonna, who's going to sit down and listen to all that and maybe try to do it but at the same time like I want the hook yeah. and I want the melody and I want it to have that like thing that's going to grab you and, and sucker you in and yeah. you know you keep coming back to um, it's hard getting that balance like yeah we um we wrote a song like Free, going on four years ago, and it was it ended up on the album that we put out, and it was called Series Finale, and 
it must have been four years ago because it was like when Stranger Things only oh, yeah. came out. Yeah, yeah. And so like what the <coughs> thing was was we, we like had all these like callbacks to like stuff that happened in like that first yeah, yeah. season of Stranger Things and all like these wee like puns and stuff about things that happened in the show. But we had also just watched a document. It was me and like Ran the bassist, um, had like um sat down writing the lyrics and we'd also just watched like at the same time this like documentary came out about here and like the paramilitary murals mm-hmm. in the walls yeah, yeah so it was like we're writing this <laughs> it was like a song about stranger things but it's like stranger things puns they explain like the sectarian conflict and all that <laughs> for like m- murals and like and oh high like paramilitary controlled communities and all and and, and i just want listen to, know. to it now i go like that's way too convoluted for anybody I think to that like, sounds if great. You think about, you know. Um, so that's not getting the balance right, you know. I, I, mean? I don't know. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> I just want to know who the Demogorgon was from here then. Like, <laughs> which politician did you pick? <laughs> All of them. Oh, brilliant. Um, but uh, lastly, um, I think what I want to ask you about, give you a chance to like plug some sure. of the stuff that's going on because uh, you're going on tour then with um, with Paper Tigers, yeah. which is really exciting. Um, so tell us a bit about that. So, yeah, like I, I am just constantly busy and doing stuff. So <clears throat> like Virgins, where we've got the show with you guys on the 19th of November. Uh-huh. And by then, um, probably just before this comes, or just as after this comes out, we're going on, Tigers are going on tour. So... Like we have this, we recorded an EP with Ryan McGrory of Beauty Sleep, and uh, like I wanted Ryan to do it because his band Beauty Sleep are like this kind of pop, like really polished, like a uh-huh. lot of melodies, like super sweet kind of thing. And I was like, so if you can bring that to this punk rocky kind of thing that I have over here, yeah. then like that would be amazing. And just his approach to vocals, and me and Ryan had a lot of like. Pre sounds pre production meetings sound so pretentious, but like we had zooms and we'd talk about <laughs> yeah. it. It was there was no like caviar lunches or anything, but uh, and like he just got all the touch points that I I was just like pretty girls meet graves and at the drive in and like Sparta, Jimmy Eat World, and I was like this chorus you sound like a big early two thousand emo chorus, and he was like I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. We can do that. It's it's funny you mentioned Beauty Sleep as well. Um, because I'm not ashamed either. They admit that like there's a lot of like local bands that I actually like. You see them do something, and you're going like, "I wish I'd done that all the time." Like, and all, that's why I messaged you. I was like, "I want to go do that." Yeah. <laughs> but, and like, I just I think just to be clear and just to like come out and be able to say like, "I like that." I, I wish I was able to do that too, or like, and take an influence from your peers and stuff like that. Like, and just before COVID. Um, we had just brought the album out and stuff and I liked all the stuff we'd done on it but there was like at the time like Beauty Sleep brought something new out Mm -hmm. and SX70 yeah, and somebody else and there was that like we bit of like indie pop or like just full on pop Uh that a few of the guys around the scene were doing and I was like I really want to be able to do that type of thing and um, and then because COVID happened and was said before as you said like doing more production stuff in the house like um we started sending each other stuff and when we're like trying to basically write pop songs mm. and that's like we're all of us here like echo park and like the yeah. new couple singles that we, we wrote all came from and it was all like bombs, you can like, hear the, it, the new single your new single like you can hear there's so many hooks and poppiness to it like it, it's, it's all like, over it no it was cool i like it um and uh and to mention the the 19th of November again so just to, to be that um, plug it man that, that cringy Do guy it. that we mentioned at the start just uh, everybody if you're watching go and tell us that you're going on the event page and so as our numbers look good <laughs> um, and please head out to the show because it'll be a cracker you know um, ourselves Ethan Holland Virgins and those Lonely Astronauts um, it's going to be a cracker for night I haven't played in that new Students Union honestly I don't think a lot of people have because it, it only opened not long before. Yeah, I COVID. had shows booked like from during this year every weekend and like thinking it was going to open. And they're like, oh, I've got to push it back, got to push it back. And now I've tried to go and book more shows and like we're full because like everybody wants to come out. And yeah, every play. like even now, there's a few new like 
new guys to the scene. Like it seems like uh, Ulster Sports is like the place to go now for yeah. gigs, isn't it? Yeah. And like um, and a couple of months ago when we were trying to book something, I um, I shouldn't be mad. <laughs> this is just so explicitly, but I, I messaged Ulster Sports trying to get in, and like they were like, we're booked up until like early next year and stuff. Yeah. Um, there's nothing there, so like in a, in a way. That's amazing. Yeah. Like the, the the scene's gonna have a real big revival in the next couple of months, mm-hmm. I think, because there's so much built up. There's probably about six hundred new projects that yeah, have started during COVID. Um, and then the backlog of people who were meant to play at the start of twenty twenty and are trying to like get like the ball rolling again, yeah. like us. Um but fantastic. And yeah, I cut you off there when you're talking about the, no, you're the tour. What I will say just on that um like talking about that kind of like that backlog and like the revival of the scene and everything like you see there's bands playing at the minute and like shows are selling out and like that's amazing you know yeah. that like you you know what it's like local shows sometimes hard to get people no i think people are going to appreciate like and what we were kind of talking about at the start is that there is all this good music and there is all this talent and like whenever all those years ago whenever i was like 14 15 16 going to see shows like every weekend there was a show on and you just went like and you seen bands bands that you might have never heard of your friends weren't in them like sometimes there were bands from england or america mm-hmm. and but you just went because the gig was on so like but you would just go you know you would just go and hopefully like that is not something that is like oh there's shows on and then tails off like it would be great if people like continued to put into it because obviously like the more the better the scene does here and the better bands from here do like the better it is for everybody and like not to get all kind of happy on it but so much of what we do here and i mean historically as a country we cannot work together but i just feel like if bands stopped like guarding their own wee corner of this sandbox you know and like done stuff like this yeah. and like work together instead of paying lip service to like oh yeah like we support each other but actually going out to, like each other's shows sharing each other's posts like see sharing a post like that I mean, we talked about it before in terms of, like, numbers and all that kind of thing, but just exposure for people and just, like, offering that kind of support, being like, I believe in what you're doing. Like, if yeah. you share someone's post, that's what that says, you know, like, maybe not as when, if you don't think about it as deeply, but that is what you're saying. Like, someone else goes, well, they like that, so maybe I like that, and then they go listen to it, and then it goes back to, like, the thing of, like, like like a Nirvana and he wore a flipper shirt or like a Millions of Dead Cops, he talks about them, you know, and yeah. then you go and you listen to Flipper and Millions of Dead Cops and you're like, they're badass, I'm going to go listen to like Black Flag now. Yeah, and it, you know, the likes of Assure, like we, we've been doing loads of like sticking up ads on Facebook and stuff recently and, you know, when you consider it costs like, you know, free P to get somebody to click on something, if somebody yeah. shares something and they get 10 people to click on it, like, yeah, that's basically you're haunting like that person like forty p. Yeah, yeah. If you put it that way, yeah. like yeah. you know, by just sharing their stuff for them. Like, um, we launched the the pre save for Blue Light Trails. It's like now, um, but we launched that yesterday, and it was twenty five pound to get anything that would even be worthwhile doing, you know. And yeah. then so, then whenever it comes out, that's another twenty five pound, and then I'm promoting the tour. So like every city that we play in, there's an event for that. Um, and then you're there's promoting. this Facebook Facebook sponsored post for that, and then that's another twenty five pound, and then you've got like one for the whole tour, and then like before you know it, you've spent like three four hundred pound on promo. Yeah. You haven't even left your bedroom yet, you know, and like that's a lot. So whenever like people do take the time to like share something, like it means so much because you're you're doing you're helping with all that, you know. Yeah, get sharing, folks. Yeah, had it lots of times, but um, um yeah, the so then the tour so um. Yeah, Blue Light Trail is coming out October 21st. And then uh, the launch show is October 23rd. It'll be passed probably by now. But um, So, yeah, and then we go on tour, and it's Liverpool, Manchester, Northampton, Rotherham, Sheffield, Glasgow. And uh, I booked four of those six shows. I was like, we're just going to go on tour. Like, let's go do it. And then booked a van mm-hmm. and done the accommodation. And was just like, I'll book all the bands. I'll sort it all out. And, like, the band are good enough to trust me to do all this. And, like, whenever this started, I was like, I have these songs, and this is what I want to do, and here's the name, and here's how it's going to look, and I'm going to do it all. You just come with me, and I promise it'll be okay. And then they were like, okay, sure. And, like, 
fair play to them for just like I literally go show up this time play and it'll be great and we like go and do stuff and like it's been it mostly worked out so far yeah and I know that that dynamic um isn't for everyone and like some people have left the band and stuff over the couple of years because they find that difficult and like because I write all the songs and like this is it's my baby essentially same with virgins like everything's mine that sounds really awful but like people call me like a little hitler and stuff but i'm like it works like you yeah, sometimes well, you need it a captain to steer the ship otherwise you just go in circles you know yeah. we've like we've tried to like over the years just have that sort of um like democracy <laughs> like egalitarian yeah. system going with the band and sometimes it's, that's it's, hard it's very hard to like maintain um, I feel like we've got like a great wee balance at the minute. Yeah. Um, like we all like pitch in and um, but I get like for a lot of bands it's just it's not doable and like I know people who have been like um they've had a band and they've came in like and booked the studio and been like this is what you're playing this yeah. is what you're playing this yeah. is what you're playing and like and for me that sounds like so horrible like yeah. I just but. It's there's different there's different ways to do it. Yeah. Um. But the tour, like, while it sounds so exciting for me, like, it sounds like a logistical nightmare too. It's and a lot. I really feel for you. But like, it's what I do, like, in my professional professional life, like, is organization. Like, I managed a lot of people. Yeah. So for like a, a big government agency, so I'm used to organization. Yeah. So I'm just just like, leave it with me. I'll do it. Like, and people like not so much for the tour because I was just like this is what we're going to go do but um, it's hard and like band I was talking to you before like bands pull out or venues are all of a sudden double booked or you know like the hotel you're going to stay in burns down or something you know and I'm prepared to be on the road and everything awful like there'll be a Godzilla attack whenever we're in Rotherham <laughs> or something you know but um, I can't I just can't wait to get out and, and do yeah. that oh, um, but yeah like just coming back to the like dynamic thing like I'll come in with a song and like sometimes I'm like it should be this you know and we'll do that and if someone has an idea we'll try it and like Healy definitely has a big contribution Emma like I can play bass a bit but like she has her own style and like we're writing some new stuff and I was like do the Emma run thing there yeah. and like you can hear it so everybody I, even though I like I'll have the song done. Like, people come in and put their, their stamp on yeah. it. And, but I know if someone's to turn around to me and, like, you play that, I'd be like, I don't think so. Like, but which is weird because I'm so autocratic that way. But, um, yeah, it's just different dynamics. It's something I, like, spend a lot of time thinking about and still talk to them about because, it's like, it's theirs as well. You know, we are we are a band and everybody does contribute in, in their own way. Um, even Matt, like he, Matt's only eighteen, and like he just turned eighteen, and hit. We went in to record, and that was his first time in a studio, like ever, and like yeah. everything was one or two takes, and like it was, he was just so on the money. It was yeah. unreal. Such a good wee drummer. Brilliant. Yeah, but um, so yeah, we go on tour, and then hopefully that goes well, and we'll have like new merch, and like, and then we'll have more music out before the end of this year, and then the EP and stuff next year, and yeah, we got to work with like a bunch of great people on this like why control sarah and Derry? she done the photos and ryan um recorded and mixed it and then robin schmidt he mastered it he's done like 1975 and placebo and like wolf alice like and like the reason we went to them was like um new pagans from here yeah here like here on, on tour at the minute yeah yeah and like on real just like a so, such a great band and um so i was like well their record sounds great like i'll see what the deal is there and that's again like an, another example of just kind of looking around what people are doing here yeah. and taking influence yeah yeah and I mean like I have no problem saying like I listen to that New Pagan like I was listening to New Pagans on the way over today I listen to it all the time and like Winona Bleach as well I listen to those guys all the time you know and like there's so many great so many great bands from here and like without you can look around your own scene and there's some of the bands from here are not my favourite local bands. They're some of my favourite bands, yeah. period, you know. I, I say that about people from here as well. Like, there was a period of time there where, like, um, Alpha Twin. Oh, like, yeah. When them those guys days. were, like, were going good. Um, and I just remember saying to them, like, lads, 
these aren't like just one of my like favorite you're not just like my favorite local band you're one of my favorite bands like yeah and we're just like the, the they just had like a wee moment where they were like every time i went there to see them like play Slaying. they were just like unreal like, yeah. they just controlled the room so well and i was going to see like you know big bands and going to like going down to dublin and see like royal blood and all and i, I was just, that yeah was and that i was the driving like, um yeah I and broke my neck at that. <laughs> See, I, I was the only person that cared about that to drive, and I was like clapping along and just being like, "Yes!" And these girls behind me were pissing themselves. And then there was the break, and then Royal Blood came back on. I was like, "Oh god, my neck!" <laughs> and I was like, "They'll stand like this." Oh, it was a great and, show. Yeah, and but I was going like, you know, if if Avatone were playing that stage, yeah, they would have like melted the the house down yeah. as well. Like, um, so yeah, it's. It, it's fantastic it's fantastic being a, a fan of this scene because we'll have it I'm sure whenever you told them that they were like this is amazing you yeah know? and like see like people come up and, and like nobody's ever said that to us, but I mean like <laughs> but I mean like but people say nice you compliments to you and like and they don't uh, even understand how much like that means because no you. one needs no one needs to do that you yeah. know and I think the same like it, it means so much especially like if you're if like a sound engineer or, like, someone who you're recording with, like, comes up to you and they're just like, you know, that was great. Because, yeah. like, some, like, I'm sure sound engineers, like, deal with so many bands. And, like, you know, you can tell the difference between, like, good set guys and they're a different one. It's like, you know, that, like, that was, that was cool, you know. Yeah. Like, we, we, whenever we played Poor Rush, like, Bo said that to us after, like, with Virgin Sir a couple of weeks ago. He's like, that was, that was great. You know, and, like, he mm. sees so yeah. many bands, you know. And you you're know just like, Bo says, it's oh, good, yeah. It's good. Like, yeah, because if he doesn't like it, like, you'll know, you know. He, he'll, he goes out for a smoke if he yeah. doesn't like it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, brilliant. Um, Michael, thanks so much for, for coming down. No, and, sir. Um, and just to play us out, if you want to pick, um, uh, a track from a local, another local artist that you're. Um, I'll go with Ona Bleach and a uh, drag, yeah, drag. The drum sound on this is like the. It starts off and it's got like this, like duck it, duck it, duck it. Like it's kind of like my hero Foo Fighters, yeah. nearly. It's mm-hmm. massive, and then Carl's bass, like just it, there's this. It just goes, and it's just, it's awesome. It, yeah. It's so good. Yeah. I like. I can't say enough. And like they just got signed to Fierce Panda. And like I know Johnny, that's their first track on Fierce Panda, isn't it? That was the first song. Uh, the on. first, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I just think it's it's great seeing bands from here do well. Like like New Pagan signed to Big Scary Monsters, amazing. Like Winona Bleach signed to Fierce Panda. Like Cherim signed to Alco Pop. Like I mean, that's great. Like there's three bands from here, and like the space of, like six months here, all signed yeah. on the road, putting out vinyl now. Like. That's what I'm talking and, and about. Nice people too, like. I mean, they're all right. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah. No, they yeah. are. Like, um, we do some work with Ben as well, who like manages Cherim and stuff. And like, it's just that, yeah. like, having the game, like that kind of team around you, like, is is amazing. You know, it, it's great. Yeah, happy days. We'll get a listen. The drag then by Winona Blades, and we'll see you next time on playback. <laughs>